Welcome to another show. I'm Sid, and in today's episode, I'm going to be going over the Spark AR Studio face reference assets, just showing them off, sort of giving a brief overview of what they are, what you can do with them, uh, and maybe showing you a little something, like a brief, a small mask, I don't know. Anyway, the programs I'm going to be using are Spark AR Studio, which is available from Facebook, and the link will be in the description. The Spark AR Studio face reference assets pack. This link is the one you want. Uh, the actual website link will be in the description below. And you get a face mesh, uh, masks, and object files to play around with. There's also head occluders and things, but I'll show you all of that in a second. And finally, you're going to need a Photoshop, uh, photo editing software like Photoshop. I'm using GIMP because it's free and open source, but anything works. And as long as you can export PNG files, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. So yeah, once you have your reference assets downloaded, you should have a small folder on your desktop. Sorry if this sounds a little bit rushed, I've actually tried to film this five times now and I keep messing up uh, <laughs> when I'm trying to load files in and stuff. And I don't really want to edit, so I'm trying to do this all in one take. Anyway, so we have the mesh folders and the text to texture folder. If we go in here, you see we have five images. I'm going to ignore this one because if you click on it, it's just... A white light and I'm sure that has some purpose but I don't want to go into it right now I'll just open up these four you can see we have a masculine a feminine face like with different types of features that you can adjust and edit and we also have two mesh masks one with tracking dots and one without so basically these are three they these will track in real time onto your face when you are using the app so this 2D image is a flat plane version of your 3D face. Like imagine if you segmented the globe and laid that out flat, it becomes a map, right? Like the earth isn't flat, but we can draw it on a flat plane. That's pretty much what this is. So these four documents, you can import them directly into Spark AR, or you can edit them in Photoshop and add layers to them and all kinds of cool stuff, which we'll get into in just a second. First ho. I want to show you what's in this mesh folder. Obviously, you click on some stuff, you realize, oh, I can't open these files. What's going on here? Basically, DAE and FBX will mostly be ignoring. What we are after is our face mesh object file and our head occluder object file. Both of these can be imported into Spark AR and you can play around with them, which I'll show you again in just a second. So now what we're going to do is open up GIMP because this is how we do's and I'm going to pull this masculine face over here and just to show you I'm going to pull in this mesh and these trackers and now look we have a bunch of layers and they're all pretty much they're all masked very closely to one another so like you can remove this and I don't know come over here and maybe let's draw some lips <laughs> or not, what am I doing? Alright, sorry, my mistake. I'm not starting this video again. Uh, so, yeah, you import these, you can, you can add the mesh and the trackers or whatever, and then if you add a new layer on top of all of that, then we can paint some... I don't know, we'll paint some lips. This is going to be very rough and won't come out looking great, but it's more of an example than anything. So we'll have some nice blue lips. Obviously I'm not doing any blending or blurring just to make this look good. This is all just as an example. So there's our lipstick. Uh, what else we got? Let's do some eyeshadow. Is this eyeshadow? Or like, I don't know. I'm not very good at this sort of stuff. But it's handy to have a face in front of you. <laughs> right. And we'll also add, I guess, like some green eyebrows. Or
cool. So we now have this weird looking makeup thing, which I can remove the layer of, or I can add all these back in. But what we're going to do right now is remove every other layer and export that as a PNG file to our desktop because pain. So we've got that now as uh, makeup.png. We can close this for a second. So yeah, basically that's that's how you use those assets in Photoshop to draw over them, create new things. Like you might have seen uh, tattoo filters where you touch change the tattoos. That's all that is is a PNG file like this where someone has drawn some tattoos over, basically like this where I made a mistake. Someone's drawn a tattoo there, and because of the way it's been drawn on that mask, uh, when you import it, it's able to track that data uh, correctly onto your face. I'm not exactly sure what I'm saying, but I know what I mean. Right, so now we've got that, let's open up Spark AR Studio so that we can start having a look at some of these other things that we've got going on. We'll create a new blank project. And then we'll add a face mesh with a face tracker above. Yep. And for now, we'll make that invisible. So we can go over our mesh, our face mesh, and our head occluders. So we'll add those in. If you drag and drop those into your assets page, your assets panel, then they will appear. This is the object, and this is the material. So we have our head occluder and our face mesh. You can see this face mesh here, and if I add a material to it, then it becomes this plain white sort of, you know, just generic face mesh. Uh, but if we add this one, sorry, let me make this invisible. If we add this one, then you see it's a little bit different, a slightly different shape, size. The eyes aren't cut out of this one, or the mouth as far as I can tell uh, and it's a little bit smaller it's more for 3D modeling outside of Spark AR like if you're using Blender to create something for the face like a, like a full 3D mask then this is probably what you need to use this face mesh because you know that's what it's for <laughs> so that's pretty much it for that I'll delete that and we'll get we'll just get away with we'll, we'll move away from the face mesh it's more for 3D modeling programs like Blender you're importing or exporting your own 3D models. That is what that's for. Next up, we'll go over to the head occluder. So head occlusion. Occlusion is where you cover up or mask certain things. So if we add the head occluder to our face tracker, oh, it's giant. It looks like a big bean. There it is, tracked onto our head now, this giant 3D model of a, of a head. So if we restart the animation and pause, we'll get a pretty pretty standard still image and you can actually come in here and see where these add these this cube and these arrows are you can actually adjust the scale and the size and there are these three buttons at the top so adjust to position here which means the movement up down left right and even depth wise you can bring it super far super close to the camera or even behind the camera or behind like the guy himself then there's rotation, so you can fully just rotate this any way you want, make it completely ridiculous. And that helps when you're trying to line up certain uh, tricky shapes with human faces or whatever it is that you're trying to track onto. And then of course there's scale, which is what we're going to be using right now, which allows you to bring the scale down to a more manageable size. So if we go just slightly above what the head is actually at, and then hit refresh and play that back, you see it's pretty close there's a little bit of edge uh, sticking out so that's something that might need to be adjusted but for the most part that is pretty much tracked onto the head uh, I mean what I might do from here would be just to push it back slightly yeah no maybe not <laughs> but anyway yeah that's basically uh, 3D modeling with a head. My microphone's all caught up right now. I don't know if that's affecting the microphone noise, sound, confusion. Right. Anyway, but yeah. So this has a material on its own, which means you can basically you can change the color of it and just have that be a thing. You can have a green screen head and and then chroma key it out, or you can add 
Or you can do what I do, which is make it completely opaque. <laughs> no. no. Flat. <laughs> opaque. What's going on here? Anyway, that's that's for a different video. Obviously, I've forgotten something, but that's basically what head occluders are. If you had a 3D model or something right now, then you could add that in. For example, a hat or some glasses. You could add that into this, and it would make it so that the legs of the glasses went behind your ears or so that the hat curved around the shape of your head and didn't just stick in front like a flat plane if that makes any sense I'm not very good at explaining myself but like I say this is the fifth time I've made this video now so there's no going back let's get rid of the head occluder for a second we'll uh, go back to our original face mesh the one we've added a material to which is directly connected to our face tracker so we've gone over the face mesh and the head occluder. Those are object files that you can play around with. The uh, face mesh that is in this folder is more for 3D modeling, like I said, with Blender or you know whatever other animation programs you might be using. Whereas the uh, head occluder is more for obscuring certain parts of your image in in the in the in the display, so that you can uh, like put other 3D models and assets over the top in. Like and layer it in sp specific ways that suit your needs. Then over here we have the textures. I've been through those. Those are mostly Photoshop textures. Although, I should point out that you can add these in as textures here. <laughs> uh, so let me let me just show you. This is our face mesh, right? And this is our face mesh material. I can always turn this into a tracker. I come over to uh, FaceTime. So here I am, hello, <laughs> uh, with a face mask that's tracking the movements of my lips, my nostrils, my eyelids, even my eyebrows. Do that little Ethan H3 kind of thing that he's got going on. Rep your niche. Uh, yeah, so you can adjust, you can have the one without trackers, you can even have this masculine sort of face thing that has eyebrows and lips and is super jarring and weird compared to the other mask, but for now, we'll back out. Yeah, so that's that's how those uh, properties work, all those assets. Uh, <laughs> and let's quickly add this in, the PNG file that we had originally. If I add that to our material layer, then there you go. This is horrendous and weird, but I've given myself green eyebrows, eye of shadow, and some lipstick, as you can see. <laughs> uh, all of that from layering over the top of the masculine face uh, PNG that they that they provide, and creating my own drawings on top. This is obviously very amateur and silly, but if you look, it does track very well and adjust itself based on the movements of my face which is why those models are so important if you're doing things like this obviously you have to be better at drawing or you'll end up with random green spots and look like some sort of overly effeminate joker but yeah that's pretty much it for this video uh, I hope that I've helped you in some way I know it was long and rambling just like the other two but uh, <laughs> you know I feel like I'm getting more confident a little bit more comfortable doing this if you have any feedback, any comments, any criticisms, let me know. Let me know below. Follow me on Instagram to check out my actual filters that I've been making, working on. Uh, thank you to Ace Hardy for leaving the first ever comment on my YouTube channel. You're the king. Uh, thanks for that. And I guess that's it. So I'll see you next time. Bye. Peace.